Hello, this is John Thompson uh, coming to you from Sarasota, Florida. Uh, I, used, I recently built a uh, application for a local attorney firm to track time and expenses. I used uh, like Rails to build it and thought I'd rebuild it uh, in a tutorial type series to show how the uh, Grails framework can be used to build an enterprise class uh, application. Um, I'm going to start uh, by building a Rails project from scratch and walk through the various uh, steps to um, build out the application. Um, I'm going to assume in this that you do have a basic understanding of Grails and are, are just starting out with the, the framework, but you do have some, some understanding bought the uh, Grails in Action book or something like that and I've read through it and I'm trying to get a start on Grails. Um, I did mention that I do live in Sarasota, Florida. I've been working with Grails for about two years now. I have 10 years of experience or so with Java and uh, other technologies. Um, you can contact me uh, at Sergey Storms on Twitter or uh, fly.yamaha at gmail if you have any questions on this. And of course the this series is going to be up on my blog, so comments are uh, welcome there as well. The application um, is a simple application to allow uh, users to track time and expenses for a client. Uh, this was originally designed for a law firm I mentioned. Uh, you can go in and create new clients, track time by users, and enter in simple expenses. The technology I use behind this, obviously, I mentioned Grails, uh, which has Spring, Hibernate, Groovy, Site Mesh in there. Uh, but I did uh, divert from some of the standard Grail stuff of uh, the templates, and I'm using uh, Blueprint for the CSS to control the layout, uh, jQuery, and also jQuery UI. Um, and great in this for uh, security is the Spring Security Core plugin, as well as the Spring Security UI plugin. Uh, it gives you a quick uh, way to secure the application and manage users. Um, at the end of this, I will show you how to deploy up to EC2 using uh, Cloud Foundry. And uh, there's also the Elastic Beanstalk on EC2. Let's see if we uh, get enough response on this. Maybe we'll do a, a special series on deploying up to uh, EC2 using Elastic Beanstalk. Um, I would like to give you a quick demonstration of the finished app here. OK, you'll see that I have the app running on my local host here. Uh, running in Firefox. <coughs> um, I'm going to log into the application here. I'm using admin, admin of the user that I've set up. And uh, this is a login form that is styled with the uh, jQuery UI uh, styling. And I'm going to click on enter here. And you'll see that the app has a basic welcome screen. And we, we also have a menu up here at the top. And I am using a uh, suckerfish type menu. That's been styled with jQuery for some of the, the nice transitions that you can see here. Um, the application, uh, again, was designed for uh, tracking time and expenses for a, a law firm. So I have a enter time, and it comes up and asks to search for a client. Um, and this is criteria that the uh, law firm wanted. And it, it goes to a back-end component that uses a Hibernate criteria query that's built on the fly depending on what is entered, and I'm not going to enter in anything, and we'll bring back the full result set of all my test data, which is just three records. And I'm going to go into Joe Smith just to show you the uh, functionality of the application. So here's uh, Joe's information, and uh, I've got buttons here to add time and expense update the client or the opposing counsel, and I'm going to go ahead and add time at this point. And you'll see that I get a, a nice jQuery window pops up. And I'm going to add two hours and add in a comment and click Submit. You can see that the, the pop-up window goes away. And here's my two hours. The, the grid was automatically updated. And I'm going to do the same for the expense. We'll add uh, $3 of postage put in some comments here and click on submit and you can see that the window goes away and we get the uh, row added here. Um, also got a, a pop-up window here for the updating the client information or to change, change his last name. I can do that. Click on submit and you can see that I get the uh, updated and also 
also the, the last name that's refreshed on the screen here. Um, other things in, in this, uh, I use the standard Grails templates for uh, some of the, the referential data that the users aren't going to be using too much, but they still needed the basic thread operations. So um, you can see that this is straight from Grails. No, no big mystery there if you're familiar with Grails. So I can go in and update uh, the information. And then finally, I am using the uh, Spring Security uh, UI plugin. And you can see that this is a little bit different. Um, this is, again, from the plugin. And you can see the, the various um, clients there. Um, search on roles. And the, the different roles that have been set up. And if I return home, I'll, I'll go back to my home page. And then we also have the uh, log up button here. And it kind of just all simply logs you out. So that's the app in a nutshell. And the next se section of this, we're going to start by uh, setting up the Grails project and go through the steps to recreate this. Okay, uh, before we jump into development, uh, just a quick word of what you're going to be seeing here. Uh, I like to joke around saying, uh, much like my maid, I don't do Windows. Uh, I uh, do uh, enjoy good Mac versus Windows jokes, but uh, my development environment is OSX, and I'm running on a 27-inch iMac, so uh, the screen capture software I'm, I'm using should uh, make that uh, okay for uh, viewing on smaller screens. And hopefully uh, everything will translate pretty good if you're viewing this on a uh, smaller screen. Uh, I will be using IntelliJ. Uh, that, that is my uh, favorite ID. It's a, a fantastic ID and it's got a lot of great uh, support for Grails built into it. And uh, it is a, a licensed product and I believe you can get a personal license for about $250 and uh, well worth the money. The, uh, the tool and also the support from the company have been fantastic. I've been using IntelliJ for probably about four years now and been very happy happy with them. And uh, finally, my the browser I'll be using is uh, Firefox and uh, also uh, be probably diving into the Firebug extension for some of the demonstrations. I have found that uh, Firebug is pretty invaluable for uh, doing web development. Uh, with that, let's uh, move on and we'll uh, get into IntelliJ and create a, a new project. Okay, and our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually create the uh, Grails application. And to actually create the Grails application, we're going to use the command line interface to do that. Uh, I'm going to assume that you've been able to install Grails on your uh, machine and have the environment set up correctly. Uh, if you don't, there's plenty of uh, how-tos on, on the internet for that. So I'm going to ask you to do the Grails command uh, create app, we'll do simply Grails, create app, and we'll call this time app. And at this time you see on the screen here that Grails is being invoked and scripts are running to build up the environment. And if I do an LS here, see that that's been created. And you can see that the standard uh, Grails directory structure has been created. Now, uh, I've got IntelliJ open here, and I'm going to transition over to IntelliJ and create a new uh, project in IntelliJ. From here, I'm going to say create a Grails application from existing resources, and I am going to navigate uh, uh, to my time application and click OK. You can see that it, it created in this directory here. Say OK. I've already got a Grails SDK uh, installed for Grails 136. IntelliJ remembered this. Um, if this is your first time through it, you'll have to uh, tell uh, IntelliJ where your SDK is located. So I'm going to click on Finish here. And we can see that this has gone out and it's uh, detecting the environment. And you can see that IntelliJ has uh, set up the project as well as the uh, Grails application. And, and right now there's not, not a lot in there. Uh, we got the standard uh, bootstrap file. And uh, this is the base generic file that has been 
integrated force and IntelliJ. And I'm going to take a minute here just to run it to see, see what fires up. And you can see that the application did fire up and it's actually running inside my browser here. This is the, the new Earth Rails installation. Uh, you can see the basic application status and some of the generic information about Rails. Uh, going forward, we're going to get rid of this and uh, set up our own project. Okay, before we get too much further, there's one thing that I want to point out to you. Uh, if you come up here and go to Edit Configurations in IntelliJ, um, you do want to adjust your uh, VM parameters for running Rails. This is the, the runtime when you go to launch it. Um, by default, it doesn't get very much memory, and when you start changing uh, the code and, and compiling on the fly, you will run out of ARM gen space. But a simple adjustment to the JVM parameters will, will help that out. And I'm, I'm mentioning this because it, it is something that did trip, trick me up when I was uh, starting out with Rails. But if you do see perm gen errors, uh, that, that is the root cause. It's not having enough memory and just uh, applying a few tweaks to the JVM memory will, will get you anyway. And this is an area in IntelliJ that you can do that at. Okay, now I, I want to go in and show you how to add some plugins. And I'm going to do that through IntelliJ. And the IntelliJ provides a little plugin wizard. Now I'll click on that and bring that up. And <clears throat> here uh, is a list of available plugins in IntelliJ. And first off, I want to select the uh, Blueprint um, plugin. And if anything popular, sometimes there are multiple versions and it can get a little confusing as to what you want. Uh, I recommend grabbing the one that Mark Palmer has published. He's uh, keeping it up uh, with the current, current releases and keeping the version number So that's the one I'm going to use uh, for this project. And I'm going to scroll down and let's grab the uh, Spring Security stuff while we're in here. And what we need is the Spring Security Core plugin and also the Spring Security UI plugin. Okay. Uh, these are uh, two plugins that uh, Bert uh, Beckwith has uh, developed, and I've used the Spring Security plugin quite a bit. and it's probably one of the better plugins out there. It's very versatile and very easy to use and uh, certainly uh, well documented. And I'm going to apply these changes. You can see I get a confirmation di dialog. Ask me do I want to uh, install these and it's going to go out, grab them, and register them into the project. One thing I'd like to point out about IntelliJ is you do get a sec second module here uh, of the plugins. And uh, you can see it just added in the plugins that we added. And these are uh, in Rails build system. They are registered in, at least in a Linux or a Unix environment. Uh, you're going to get them stored in your home folder under type Rails, which is a hidden folder. And then the version of Rails projects, your project name, and plugins. And from here, it, it is handy to come in and you can see the source of the plugins. Um, this is a feature that they did add in IntelliJ 10, 10 uh, somewhere along the lines. And it, it has been pretty handy going in to see what a, a plugin is doing. You can have a quick access to the code. OK, I'm going to wrap it up for now. Uh, coming up next in the next session, I'm going to try to cover uh, Installing the Spring Security plugin, there's a couple domains that uh, need to be created, and uh, we'll step through some of the configuration options for that. And then uh, also build out the uh, domain model for our little application uh, and show you a, uh, a quick intro and rundown on the uh, GORM tools and uh, the domain objects that we'll be using. And I want to conclude that with uh, setting up the uh, bootstrap file to load up some data that we'll be using for testing going forward. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, take care.